Dr. Brett Opegard. He's um, joining us from Hawaii, I do believe, unless he's traveled onto the mainland, but I think he's in Hawaii. Um, associate professor at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And he's worked with some of our members um, on an initiative that's called Descriptathon. He's going to explain a little bit more about that and oppor an opportunity that might exist uh, for, it's coming up really, really soon. So, um, Brad, I'm gonna turn the time over to you and if you can, you can go ahead and um, put your video back up, if that's okay. And, oh, and you got the ocean right in the background. That's very cruel. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Stuart, I appreciate it. I am in Hawaii, but this is a fake uh, background. <laughs> it's, a, it's an ocean scene with a palm tree behind my head and, you know, beautiful aqua blue water and waves coming in. So uh, I thought I would set the tone. Um, anyways, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to attend my first uh, BBA conference. Uh, Stuart and Don, I appreciate inviting me. It's also good to hear Gary's voice on here. He's an old friend of uh, the Descriptathon. So um, good to have him be a part of the audience. And I'll tell you a little bit. First, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about myself and uh, describe myself. So um, I'm not such a, a stranger. I'm in a horizontal zoom rectangle right now. Like I said, with the waves behind me, I'm shown from the shoulders up. I'm a 50 year old American man of Western European and Norwegian family origins. I have blue eyes, pinkish tan skin, no facial hair. My dark uh, brown hair is shaved sh short on the sides but kept long on the top. Um, I'm wearing an aqua blue short sleeve shirt with a collar and I'm wearing glasses that have a clear rectangular frame. Also, I want to give you a little background in my connection to the military. I'm very proud of my family's history in the military. I'm a son of the American Revolution. My wife is a daughter of the American Revolution. Our families have been involved in the U.S. military uh, service just about ever since. My grandfather received a Purple Heart during uh, Iwo Jima. My wife's grandfather was uh, commander of a boat at Pearl Harbor. So although I personally have not been in the military, I'm always looking for ways to support our military members and especially support um, the full inclusion of people in the military in public places. And so this, pro this research project I'm working on um, is all about public places. Again, I'm the, um, I'm the principal investigator of this project. It's called the Unit Description Project. Um, I put the link to the website in the chat so you can grab that and um, uh, surf all around the, the website. It's unidescription.org. If you don't have access to the chat, uh, unidescription.org. Um, I'm an associate professor at the University of Hawaii, so my background's in technical communication. I uh, basically study media forms and how they work and how to make better media. And one of my primary areas of study is the, um, the use of uh, audio description, including the production of it and the reception of it. So I can't cover all this in 15 minutes, but I'll tell you there's a lot of stuff on the website that you can um, check out. My email is also in the chat, brett.opagard at hawaii.edu. So, uh, B-R-E-T-T dot O-P-P-E-G-A-A-R-D at hawaii.edu if you wanna ask me any questions or get involved in the project. <clears throat> and you're probably saying, well, what is this project that we're talking so much about? <laughs> um, basically what we do is we study um, the production and reception of audio description within national parks. So if you like national parks, if you like history, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, historical sites about battles and military history, but all sorts of other history. There's, of course, natural history like Yellowstone and Yosemite. There's um, thematic history like about the environment and about uh, women's equality. And there's, so there's all sorts of uh, national historic sites or national um, parks that people um, should be able to get involved in and, and freely do that without any sort of obstacles. And what we found is that one of the obstacles for people who are blind or have low vision is the lack of audio description. And so we've been trying to address that by um, building 
web tools for creating audio description and also building web tools for um, disseminating audio description. So uh, getting that audio description that we spend a lot of time working on, we give it to people um, through a variety of ways, but the primary way and one, what I'd recommend if you have a smartphone is to go into your app store and type in UNI description, UNI description, and then download the app and you can listen to all sorts of um, audio description from national parks around the country. Um, it's a great way to kind of, um, in this time of the pandemic, to go on a little vacation um, in your mind with going to these wonderful parks and hearing what they're all about. <clears throat> and these descriptions are not um, audio tours, they're audio descriptions. So they're designed specifically for people who are blind or low vision. And, um, and we've worked with about 130 or so national parks in the country right now. Um, there are about 400 sites, so we still have some, some ways to go. It's also, we've also been working with Parks Canada, um, our neighbors to the north, and we have uh, in our latest round, in our upcoming round, we'll be working with um, national parks in UK. So we're starting to work into Europe and, and other places. Um, in addition to national parks, we have other uh, public places that people can get involved in through audio description that includes uh, fish and wildlife sites if you like to be outdoors uh, in the fish and wildlife refuges uh, and also if um, you like the arts like the Kennedy Center that's part of a, a group that we're working with and so there's just a lot of opportunities to um, get engaged in public places with through audio description and and uh, what we do is try to figure out how to make better, better audio description and then also how to get it to people um, where they need it. So I'll give you, um, I'm gonna give you a couple little samples of what we're working on and then um, open the floor to some questions. I know I have a pretty short window of time. But uh, one of our projects we're working on that might interest you is funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities and we're, um, working around a site in San Francisco called the Presidio. And in that site, there's a public uh, walk called the Goldsworthy Walk, where there's some public art in that area. And um, people who go to San Francisco and wanna go into this area right now, there are some tactile parts to it. And obviously being outdoors, walking on trails is fun, but it's also a lot of fun to, um, have, this, have the visual information translated into audible information so you can, you can uh, have the same equivalent experience as people who can see the artwork. You know, what are they, what are they seeing and what does that, um, what is that information you want to have it too. So uh, we've, we've spent about the past six or eight months working with some sound artists in that area. And what we have um, been studying there is a is a uh, kind of a gold standard of audio description. Like how can we take audio description, which is primarily utilitarian and just the facts and how can we turn it into something that's beyond that? <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm gonna try sharing my screen and play sound. Hopefully you can hear it. I'm sure Stuart will let me know if it's not working, but um, nope, I guess I can't share my screen and play sound. So I'll have to try know, that again. Oh. Uh, Brad, I'm going to go ahead and give you the um, co-host. Okay. So I think that might do it. You just want to share your screen, right? So yeah, and my sound. On just one second. I'm going to make that possible. Okay. There we go. All right. Nice. I think Thank that you. Do it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this um, this piece I'm playing uh, is available on the mobile app, and it's also available online on the website so you can hear the whole thing but I just wanted to give you a taste of what um, we're doing there and so basically um, we have utilitarian type um, description which is created by the national park folks and it's good and high quality and so one of the things we're studying is how does the different how do different voices affect the reception of the audio description so I'm just going to play a short clip from like the most basic level of audio description that we've put together. This is a Images Goldsworthy in the Presidio. Image one of four. Spire description. The top left is the spire. 
constructed in 2006. 15 inches wide at the base and 100 feet tall, the spire stands sharply vertical in a forest landscape. Okay, so that's about one of the pieces of art in the Goldsworthy. Um, and so we take that same description and we machine voiced it that way. And we have another machine voice that we try. This is how this one sounds. Image is Goldsworthy in the Presidio. Image one of four, Spire. Description. The top left is the Spire, constructed in 2006. 15 inches wide at the base and 100 feet tall, the Spire. Okay, and then uh, so we so we start to study like how do these different voices affect the um, reception of of the description, and then we added a human voice to it. I'll just give you a little bit of that. Again, you can hear the whole things on the mobile app, uh, web or the or the mobile app. You just um, look up Goldsworthy on there. Images Goldsworthy in the Presidio. Image one of four. Spire. Description. The top left is Spire, constructed in 2006. 15 feet wide at the base and 100 feet tall, the spire stands sharply vertical in a forest landscape. So we're doing that kind of research and we're also taking the next step, which is uh, giving the artist the, the idea and saying like, okay, if if we, were, if we were going to create a piece of sound art around this, but it was also audio description specifically for people who are blind or low vision, how would you do it? And this is just a little clip of a much longer piece, but I just wanted to, you to hear how that sounded. Inspired in 2008, installed on the hill across from Inspiration Point. Completed in 2008, Spire looks just like its name. It's a tall spire made from 37 Monterey Cypress tree trunks, carefully fastened together and twisting up and up, almost 100 feet in the air and 15 feet in diameter at the base. That sounds big, but how can we get the full sense of the scale of Spire? Okay, let's try something. Lift your arms over your head. Reach as high as you can. Feel the air on your fingers. Now, take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Imagine the trees stretching up together, just like your body, but 15 times higher than your fingertips. At the very top, these are the fingertips of the trees. They're feeling the wind. Imagine that space above us, that huge openness. Now, reach up with your listening, up into the air. Use your mind's ear. You did it! What's it like up there? I know we're just listening in the imagination, but still, that's pretty cool. And so we really like challenge the idea of what audio description can be. Um, it, it certainly is great to have functional audio description. That's the first step. And then we want to also figure out like, how can we make it even better? So we're spending a lot of time on a lot of different things and I don't have much time to, to discuss all those. The website goes over quite a bit of it. But what I will say is we do have a lot of opportunities for people to get involved in our research. And um, part of that is upcoming uh, descriptathon, we call it, which is like a hackathon. And we put people into teams. So the teams have some staff members from the park site, they have a volunteers, they have some people from American Council of the Blind, Blinded Veterans Association. Again, Gary can talk about this uh, if you know him and wanna chat with them about how it works. But we bring, the, bring this team together and everybody works on creating the audio description for the site and then we share it through our, through our uh, mobile apps and then we get, gather information about what people think about it and that um, leads us to create better audio description. And unfortunately, I'm out of time. I'd love to talk longer, but um, and I see at least one hand up. Um, but let's, I'd be happy to take questions. And we will allow the questions. So the first question is going to be Mr. Daryl Goldsmith. Daryl, please go ahead and unmute, sir. Yes, 
Yes. Can you hear me? I can, Daryl. Hi. Hello. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, I love descriptive everything. And um, <laughs> I just am impressed on how from the mechanical um, voice has evolved into very real sounding. Um, that was very impressive. I, um, I, entered, I was in Hawaii years ago and locked up in the Alava Valley Quarantine Center with my guide dog. And, um, and I ventured out and went to the Arizona Memorial. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the way out there, of course, they give you the history. Um, but after I arrived on the memorial, um, if it wasn't for the kindness of a lady who described the plaque with the 1102 na names on it and took me around the barrier and let me braille it, let me feel the whole plaque. Um, but I was wondering if you have done anything with descriptive at the Arizona Memorial or any of the World War II uh, Pearl Harbor invasion um, sites. Um, we have been in discussions with the, with the folks. It's called the Valor in the Pacific is the name of the site. Um, but we haven't done the, um, the Arizona Memorial yet. We haven't described that yet. Uh, we would like to, and that would be great if, like, if you send me an email now saying, I really wish that would be described, I can give it to the park people and that will maybe, um, give them an incentive to do it. Um, so please do that. But we have quite a few, um, quite a few World War II sites that have been described or, or related to World War II. Um, the list is on unidescription.org. And if you go to impact, um, if, do you have access to uh, that website? I, I will be able to, yes. Okay, so just go to impact and then um, the actual link is called, uh, I think parks we worked with or something like that. And there's a whole bunch of them. If you send me your email, I also can go through that list and send you direct links. I just don't have a top of my fingertips like every one that's a World War II related, um, but we know we have quite a few. Well, thank um, you. We, I mean, we have like, for example, the Eisenhower Memorial. We have uh, Rosie the Riveter. Um, I'm just coming to mind, things like that. FDR's uh, historic sites, um, depending on how tangential you want. If you want just like battle sites, I'd have to look through the list, but um, yeah, I know, I know we have quite a few. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, sure, just send me an email. I'd be happy to help you. Yes, sir. And, and Brad, it's Don Overton. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to hold and see if there's any additional questions. I just want to say I lived over on Oahu for a couple of years, and so I'm very, very jealous right now, and uh, <laughs> you, you have some positions open. <laughs> come right well, back. you got to come miss, visit. Come, yeah, I, I come miss visit. being over there. The only thing I don't miss is, you know, eating poi all the time every time I have breakfast. So. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we, we should do a descriptive on here where you come and do it in, in it person. It sounds like a plan to me. I'm going to um, <laughs> bring uh, Gary on. Gary Shellerman, go ahead, sir. Please unmute. Uh, yes, this is Gary Shulman, Louisiana, Mississippi Regional Group. Uh, I want to encourage every all the BVA members to, to join us. It's uh, <clears throat> I did the last one they had, which was back in February, and enjoyed it. It was uh, you met a lot of park rangers from uh, ours. The one the park we were doing was in Kansas. It's a, uh, a fort, Fort Lorne, in Kansas, and uh, met the the park rangers there, plus an ACB person from South Dakota, and then another volunteer from. Virginia. And our weather here was in the 70s and their weather up there was below zero. So I enjoyed it very much. But it was it's a it's a it's a great organization. It's uh, very fun. A lot of takes a couple of days to do it, but it's, it was uh, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work on it, Gary. We really appreciate it.
having him be involved. I did remember too, we have the world, uh, sorry, going back to Daryl's uh, question, we have the world, world War II Memorial in uh, DC also described. So uh, yeah, and Gary was a great contributor. We had a, a couple BBA members in the last Descriptathon. They seemed to have a lot of fun. Um, and we would love to have more. This is um, very important for me to help reach out to people in the military or blinded veterans and get them uh, access to these public sites. So I uh, hope, you'll, hope you'll come and see how we can help. Eduardo Miranda, go ahead, Eduardo. Go ahead and unmute, please. Currently unmuted. Thank you. Very you good. Currently on a table. Awesome to presentation. Enter this table, press control. I option, just wanted to point out window. with the 100 year anniversary coming up for the Tomb of the Unknown. I wanted to put in a request for the USS Olympia in Philadelphia. Great. Would you mind sending me an email on that? Because these are the kinds of things that when I forward to the sites, they get really excited about. If it's just me saying, yeah, we should do that, then they're, you know, they got, they're getting pulled a lot of different ways. But if you, send, a new window. if you send me the you email, I think, yeah, that'd be great. I appreciate it. We'll, you we'll got it. On it. You know, we love to have, we love to have sites that people are, excited about and eager to get involved in but they feel like there's some obstacle to their activity there and and if audio description is the only obstacle then we got to give them the audio description so um, thank you Eduardo and we'll hold for another minute to see if there's any other questions anybody else please use the raise hand feature and we'll call on you and again, the Descriptathon is a—it's like a hackathon type environment where people get on these teams. We have a lot of activities. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of interaction. Um, people who are blind or low vision are equal members of the teams. They have full agency to participate. It's not—it's um, not like just sitting around waiting for someone to hand you some description. You're co-creating it, and um, and then there's. Uh, chances at the end to also go to these sites and test the audio description on site, which um, we really like to. I mean, obviously, there's some pandemic concerns, so that sort of slowed us down on that. But we love it. We love getting people on field trips to national parks and um, getting Hi, people Leonie. feedback. Yeah. Wonderful. Hi, Tracy Farrell, go ahead, sir. Hi, Brad. Uh, this is Tracy Farrell down here in Louisiana. I got a veteran with me, and he's curious on the World War II Museum. In New Orleans, uh, I, I know they have the descriptive telephones. You put the card in, and, and you hear the simulated voice of one of the soldiers or sailors or airmen that were in the, in the war. Their story, but do you have anything in the running for describing the actual uh, uh, things that you see within the museum? Do that? Do they do things like that within a museum type environment? Uh, definitely, we have um, a whole program on museum description. We're working with a lot of museums around the country. Um, we don't have that particular one that we're working with, but we'd be happy to contact them and let them know we have this request in and we'd love to love to include them. Um, so if, again, if you send me the, e the email with the official name of the place, so I know exactly where it is, I can reach out to them and say, I've had this request. Would you like to be a part of our next descriptathon? And basically what happens in the descriptathon is we practice description, but we also make description that's going to be released to the public. So at the end of the descriptathon, which is a three day event, um, the description that we create is, is uh, put out to the public in, in free ways. There's no, this is not a this is a research uh, grant funded program. There's no cost to anybody producing or consuming the description. We just are trying to make better description and research how to make better description. So um, I'd be happy to contact those folks in Louisiana. We, um, we do have the, I can't remember which direction it is, a something Louisiana um, Wildlife Refuge is in our next descriptathon. So coming up in October. Um, so that'll be coming into play. Um, I, and we also have, I, I believe, some other description in Louisiana. I'd have to look at the list. But if you send me an email, I'd be happy to, to uh, locate all that for you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Daryl Goldsmith. Go ahead and unmute, Daryl. I think somebody's knocking at the door. Y yes. Um, and 
more than likely the same answer that you gave Tracy uh, will apply to this. Um, but the Pensacola Naval Air Museum, home of the Blue mm -hmm. Angels, um, yeah. that would be a very great um, one to do if, if, if possible. Yeah, we'd love to. Um, it just comes down to, can we get the, the site to participate? And if they can, we have grant funds for the next three years to support a lot of this. So um, we're just, I'll just let them, you know, let them know you're interested, let them know we have the program and then try to get it going. Yeah, and then they also, they also can do it on their own too. You know, everything we make in our projects, we put on the website for free use and the tools free to use. So, um, you know, beyond the Descriptathon, people can get on there and just start describing today. And it takes about 10 minutes to learn the website and, and then you can push a button and start popping out the audio description. So there, one of the parts of our research project has been to completely eliminate or lower uh, dramatically any kind of um, obstacles pr to producing and sharing audio description. And those have basically been eliminated. If you can type in the text, you can share audio description. And, and even copy and pasting, if they already have audio description, but they just can't, like their machines are broken or whatever, we can just copy and paste it into our system and, and uh, export it. So um, yeah, be happy to Send, send them all my way and I'll, I'll be happy to reach out to these folks and do all the legwork. Yeah, and likewise on Blinded Veterans side, we're gonna make sure that we get these resources up for everybody. We'll make sure that we incorporate those in the next evolutions of the websites and we'll also connect them to this presentation session. We'll make sure when we set up those landing pages for this presentation post uh, convention, uh, we'll make sure that you're able to access all these additional resources. So, Brett, thanks. I'm going to kick it over to Stuart to wrap things up. Okay, thank you again.